go on now to the second session, uh, sec uh, the second presentation today, which is on Buddhism, why it matters to us. And this is this is going to be by Dr. Nidip Dorji, uh, who is um, uh, who is from the Department of Public Health, uh, University of Med uh, Kesar Diarpuro, University of Medical Sciences in Bhutan. So, Doc, I I, I would like to. Um, um, introduce him. Uh, Dr. Nidip has been teaching at the Faculty of Nursing and Public Health in Kisa Gyapolo University of Medical Sciences of Bhutan, which is the only medical university in Bhutan for the last 16 years. Uh, Nidip obtained his degree in public health from Mahidol University in Thailand, Doctor of Philosophy from Queensland University of Te Technology, Australia, and postdoctoral fellowship award from the University of Quebec at Montreal, Canada. At uh, FNP, Nidup teaches subjects including international public health, epidemiology and biostatistics, environmental health, sexual and reproductive health, and research. His professional interests include areas such as prevention of childhood adversities, well-being and quality of life, senior citizens' life skills, uh, life skills and application, end-to-end, end-of-life end, end care and spirituality. Mixed method research design has been of particular interest to Dr. Nidav. He is currently a member of the Institutional Research Board of the Faculty and International Editorial Board member of Thai Journal of Public Health. Dr. Nidhu has presented scientific papers in international conferences and has publications, several publications in peer-reviewed journals. Oh, uh, Dr. Nidhu Dorji, Thank it's you. your time now. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I will move, uh, move ahead with my presentation and I'll do the justice to be on time. Uh, let me begin uh, my presentation um, uh, by asking this simple question uh, about your understanding about uh, Buddhism. N next, next slide, please. Okay, you can just keep on clicking. So, if the participants here are of the understanding that Buddhism is associated with shaved heads, maroon or silken robes, vegetarian meals, meditation, a peaceful smile, or non-violence, then I think as a Buddhist myself, I will feel more secured and it's worth a praise, uh, especially the non-violent attributes which, uh, in, in today's world, which is full of war and non-violence. And uh, our understanding is, is this just limited to, to just uh, these attributes? Uh, it is absolutely not, because the founder of the Buddhism, the Gautama uh, Buddha, himself has gone beyond these attributes in discovering uh, the uh, enlightenment and awakened state. Um, let me also pose this uh, small question, is Buddha or a science? Now, if science believes in the causal effect relationship, Buddhism absolutely does believe in uh, causal and effect relationship. So Buddhism is therefore a science, but it has to be a mind science. Mind because all the phenomena revolves around the mind. Now let's take an example of this concept, happiness, that every one of us are striving for. Um, and this happiness is definitely a state of mind, which is very relational. I cannot uh, example enough of this, if throwing a stone to a jumping frog is a happiness to a five-year-old boy, it is certainly a situation of life and death for the jumping frog. Therefore, this is subjective, it is elusive, and it is very, very uh, relational. Now, if you look into this two picture, you could see and even wonder what kind of happiness this 
mendicant must be drawn. And what kind of happiness this monk is saying? A monk says that I'm happy of no reason, of no idea why he is happy. I think this is basically what Buddhism is uh, moving forward to, is gearing towards to achieve it. Next slide, please. Now, let us not forget that Buddhism was discovered. Buddhism was discovered, not invented, by a simple, ordinary person who was a prince. Not in any of the sophisticated laboratory setup, not using any of the electron microscope, or per se, but by sitting on a simple kusha grass under a tree next to the river Narenjana. Probably few of the animals like buffaloes must have run up the stream and down the stream to witness what was discovered. So we understood what is discovered is the truth. And why truth? Truth is because they are infallible and they do not change. Something we generally, the people generally don't want to hear about. So now I want to talk about what are the truths that was discovered. The truths discovered are the truth of suffering, the truth of the origination of suffering, the causes of suffering, and truth to the cessation of suffering. That means to say the suffering can be eliminated. And finally, the truth of the path towards eliminating suffering. Next slide, please. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, suffering. Although I know it's very boring to hear about it. Uh, suffering in Sanskrit or Bali is also called as Dukkha. And it includes a broader psychological idea of dissatisfaction, lack of contentment, pain, misery, frustrations, and feeling of ill, etc., etc. Um, the suffering captures the fact that life never lives up our expectations, our hopes and aspirations, our plans and dreams. For example, a wish for a life to live forever or fall for something like happily lived ever after, which is untrue. Now, can you even imagine even love is a suffering? Stories around the world and evidences that the very love that has bounded two people together has made them separated to each other. And what is more painful and frustrating is that, that your loved one is staying next to the door, next door and is with somebody else. It's so painful, isn't it? Now, within the context of the four noble truths that we have discussed before, selfish craving, grasping, wrong desire, attachment, Last greed are sep uh, supposed to be of, said to be the root cause and conditions of suffering. But the good thing is that, next slide please. The good thing is that the causes of suffering can be eliminated. Next slide. So how is it possible to this suffering? The Buddhists have prescribed uh, in particular, eightfold noble paths that concerns with morality, that is dealing with right speech, right action, right livelihood. And also that concerns with a mental concentration or meditative cultivation, we call it samadhi. So through right effort, right mindfulness, and right con uh, concentration. And finally, that concerns with wisdom is about right understanding and right intention. Next. Next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit more about um, uh, wisdom. Also known in Sanskrit as prajna, it refers to the liberating knowledge of truth that is achievable in awakening or in enlightenment state. It is the right view of understanding or the right thought or intention, which are the fundamental path towards gaining insights into the true nature of existence. 
But we, we did come across the word awakening or enlightenment. Why awakening? Because Buddhists do believe that we are all sleeping. Now, if waking up from a horrendous dream or bad dream is as good as waking up from a good dream is bad, then we made one mistake. We slept. Next slide, please. Wisdom is therefore simply an unbiased perception. It is a mind that realizes a clear, absolute, and complete picture of the true nature of reality. Some of the examples could be the true nature of reality. Some of the examples could be here. Why the water is wet? Why the fire is hot? Why we see through our through nose as much as we smell through nose, not through ears? Why do birds on earth have no teeth? And why all bone have to die? Why can't Corona they die? Corona will remain for two years. So, these are Vaccine some the solutions that do not necessarily have to have answers. Because it is the way it is, and it will be the way it is. No matter how desperately human being tries to alter it. Because other species don't try to alter it. Forget that, they even don't eat to alter it. So in the term, wisdom is anything that goes against the ill habitual pattern. We are so habituated in tearing apart somebody's limb and get it into our small mouth just to satisfy our taste buds that are said to be inside our oral cavity. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, is the wisdom and the religious oriented part of Buddhism works just like sub in the tree. He is what we are supposed to drink, not the cup. But without the cup, drinking is also quite difficult. But most of us end up drinking cup. That is why a lot of problems. I am even wondering if modern people fall more for the yoga than the yoga itself and the intentions behind it. Now, if sitting straight does not take us closer to the truth, the truth that nothing lasts forever, we are simply wasting the muscle of the gluteal area. Now, if I'm a bit rude here, we are simply wasting the muscle of our butt. Next, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, in addition to suffering, the permanence, impermanence, which is the universal feature of all existence, is something very much close to Buddhism. It captures the idea that everything that comes into existence is already on the way out. It sounds so pessimistic, isn't it? But we should be thinking to impermanence as to why big companies like Coca-Cola, uh, Johnson's Cream Company, Yoga Pen Factory, for example, uh, survives and makes billions of dollars. Now, if not drinking Coca-Cola or if our skin texture not changing remains permanent, then there is no point of these big companies to survive. It is because people drink Coca-Cola, our skin texture changes every now and then. That's why the these big, big companies do survive. We have to, in fact, thank impermanence in that, in that way. So there is nothing religious about impermanence. Next slide, please. Karma is, uh, is another Karma is uh, 
uh, another uh, concept um, that is uh, basically cause conditions and effect. Now, if we give a little time to contemplate on this concept, what is not there on the earth, which is not related, I mean, what is not on this earth that is not related to, to cause condition and effect, the karma. So we are creator of, of, of our own problems. COVID-19 that we are suffering from right now, should we be blaming the, the people of Wuhan city in China, SARS, MERS, ozone depletion, Amazon deforestation, our lung of the earth. So we are confronted with so many uh, problems and we are the maker of those problems. So if it is not for greed and cravings, I do not understand what to blame for. Uh, the uh, Gautama Buddha himself, he mentioned, we are our own master, nobody else. We are our own enemy, nobody else. Whether we do good or whether we do bad, we are our best judged, nobody else can be. Next slide, please. So, the accumulation of merits and methods towards gaining wisdom is something very, very critical for uh, Buddhism, for Buddhist. One of the examples could be to accumulate merit could be through the conduct of 10 virtuous uh, deeds or refraining from doing the non-virtuous deeds. For example, taking away life, taking what is not given, sexual misconduct. This pertains with the physical aspect. Lying, sowing, discovery, speech and idle gossip that concerns with speech, covetousness, ill will and wrong, with, wrong views that are concerns with the mental aspect. So in addition to this one, Buddhists are very much encouraged to have a sacred outlook towards everything, including our life. Now, I can't uh, uh, relate enough with the, the belief of the indigenous people of Australia. They believe we belong to the land, not that la the land belongs to us. It is by being aware that we belong to the land, we rather know how to harmonize living with the mother nature. But in today's time, this happens the other way. So in addition to this virtuous deeds and sacred outlook, some of the ways towards uh, accumulating merits or gaining wisdom could be immeasurable thoughts, parameters, which I am sure my next presenter will highlight more, uh, in, more in detail about it. Next slide, please. Like it or not, space is something we are living with in our daily life, day-to-day -day life. Stress is multi-causational. One of the cause, disharmony in the family, falling for bikinis and temptations, belief in the rankings, hierarchies. In life, there are many fishes, many things to fish out such as fame, such as credentials, such as pride, such as winning the game or losing the game, losing somebody, someone very dear, or these days, a lot of uh, uh, that, uh, if I'm not rude, is basically promoting uh, violence, uh, wars, broken uh, relationships, and many more are the causes of our day-to-day -day life stress. Next slide, please. Now, we cannot deny the fact that uh, youth are our future. It is, youth are the backbone of any nation. They shape the future. But how do they shape? Sir, 
According to the American psychological three fourth of the participants have reported poor mental health to feel stress, respectively. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. So in, again, in the study done in Canada among the youth, the prevalence of the perceived poor mental is observed to be on an increasing rising trend over the years. So indeed, this is a very grave concern that demands an urgent attention to address it. Next is so one of the suggestions uh, to distress is to just sit. Most of us are very reluctant to just sit because we are preoccupied by, uh, with many, many aspects. Even if sitting does not take us closer to the truth, the truth that nothing lasts forever, it at least has a very a, a great benefit of restricting ourselves, for example, going to the forest and chop down all the street trees or go out and punch somebody just because of argument. Now, in the words of uh, William James, an American psychologist, uh, he said, human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes. So the mindful practice is which is simply paying attention or also meaning guarding the peace of mind can also mean that mindfulness practice is to remember. Now we cannot, we can argue or not argue here. We understand that uh, most of our best plans becomes useless if we don't remember. So here is a, a clue that mindful practice can help us. But in the picture, you can see our monk in the uh, right uh, corner, it just sit, and nothing else. But most of us, I believe, just sit, but, our, but filled with a lot of mental activities going on. Personally, me, I try to sit, but my mind is all the time preoccupied distracted by ringtones, distracted by phone calls from the loved ones. So as Satan is, is to Christ Christianity, distraction is evil in Buddhism. Next slide, please. So in nutshell, Buddhism, Buddhism talks about the truth of suffering because we, most of us helplessly believe that all compounded things are permanent. We also know the causes of suffering because all we as a human being have is emotions. And if we do not know how to deal with emotions, emotions are certainly very painful. The next truth is the truth of truth that the suffering can be eliminated. Just because all, we li all the phenomenon we have is, it doesn't have an inherent existence. An independent, just aggregate. If the causes can be eliminated, then I, I don't know what, what more nirvana are we expecting. So the believer of these four important verses in Buddhism we call seal are qualified to be called as Buddhist. Next slide, please. Finally, the take back home message from my presentation today is that we will not argue that we all have buddhi, our intelligence, our uh, reasoning capacities. So let's use buddhi to become Buddha or we don't use buddhi to become Buddha. Next, uh, next point. 
we have the choice to uh, become. So therefore, if the forum have any Buddha type of question, let this Buddha try to answer all. Uh, Sir, in, 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 thank you so much. Sir. Namaste. Thank you, Dr. Nedo, for that really excellent presentation where you have uh, you know, very clearly uh, you know, exposed how Buddhism matters and matters to all of us. Um, indeed, you have uh, given the secret behind uh, you know, why uh, Bhutan is called the country of happiness. Uh, it's on the top of uh, yes. So uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that you have shared with us on how the truth of suffering and given such wonderful examples of the tea and the cup and uh, you know how you how you know we can just sit by just sitting, not even meditating, but just sitting we can you know save the world and how the land we belong to the land and not that land belongs to us. That's wonderful, really. I, I am sure that all the participants thoroughly enjoyed your presentation and they have a lot of questions. Uh, there are some questions uh, which you, I hope you uh, I took, uh, take it now. Um, there is yes. a question uh, again from Dr. Pawan Kumar. He says, uh, he asked how mixed spirituality and religiosity of globalizing world is affecting health of homo, homo sapiens and other animals uh can i have that question uh, okay yes i'll repeat it how mixed spirituality and religiosity of globalizing world is affecting health of the homo sapiens and other animals um personally in my little knowledge and in my little understanding um, the spiritualism and the religiosity is just, they, they are not separate, they cannot be divorced for, for sure. Uh, while I consider more spiritualism more profound than religiosity, for example, um, going to temple, some, for, for example in Bhutan, many of our young children go to uh, a temple visit especially during ex exam time and without actually understand the fact that why they are actually going up there in buddhism um, our belief is that uh, you go and search inside the only way to go out is going inside in, in the case of buddhism so therefore the in the, in the troubled world i i feel that uh, by going inside is the only solution to, to find answers to, to the problems that we encounter every now and then. I don't know, I'm, I'm quite far away from the answer, but that is the shortest answer I can give it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there is one more question. What sol solution can Buddhism offer to the seemingly troubled world? I think you've spoken much on that. Such as COVID-19, all of us are affected by us. Any of us can contribute by own practice of the Buddha's word, especially compassion and sympathy to all. Uh, and the question is, how can Buddhist meditation help Buddhism? Uh, wow, this is a very profound question. This is a very profound question. Personally, me, I think this, this is uh, one of the questions I raised to the previous presenter too. Anyways, the question got back to me now. So, uh, so I personally feel that Buddhism can have a, uh, a proof, uh, have a assistance to the troubled world in the sense that, as I mentioned before, Buddhism deals with impermanence. Buddhism deals with truth. The truth is something not many of us are uh, really wanted to hear about. It is because that we don't realize the truth is why every now and then this, then this trouble gets into an, an individual's life. Um, we need to live in the troubled world just because we don't discover ourselves. So. If you go inside, just like I said before, the going inside is the only solution to us going outside, to, to us uh, uh, finding solutions outside. So I personally feel that uh, um, 
you rediscover yourself. You know, you get acquainted with the concept of impermanence. What is there on earth that is <coughs> permanent in, in this earth? Nothing is permanent. Most of us helplessly believe that everything is permanent. This is the fundamental root cause of all our suffering. So knowing that nothing lasts forever, <coughs> even COVID-19 will not last forever, it will go. Thanks to the scientific community that so many core vaccines are coming up, extra uh, Zeneca is coming up, Moderna has come up, Fi Pfizer has come up. I think the COVID-19 will go away slowly. It's nothing permanent for, for sure. Thank you. I cannot hear. I cannot hear. Uh, how can family give a stress-free life to children? Yeah. This is yet another... Um, personally, me, I have two little... Uh, I have two little uh, sons who are very naughty, I know that. But I always say, say, say to my two little ch children, don't... I, I never talk about how do you do well in schools? What is the grade you get? My only advice to my two little children is try to become a good human being. That's it. I will not mind even if they become sweeper. I will not mind even if they become doctors or scientists. For me personally, let them become a good human being. And that is a job done for a father like myself. This is all I think. Thank you. I think um, one more question. Uh, just a few words. Okay, sir. A few words, Nodip. I greatly enjoyed your deliberations. The way you presented uh, Buddha's concept, ideas, giving practical examples, I think it was very eye opener, insightful for each one of us. And finally, you draw conclusion saying that it is very important to become a good human being and realize that nothing is permanent. We, in today's society, we are in the red race to accumulate more resources yeah. as an individual through business, through politics, through other means. Sometimes we deviate from the mainstream to earn more money. But at the end of the day, after a certain period, we die. We do not take anything with us. But during our presence, we are in a, such a red race and yeah, we, are in, we are so busy to earn more money, to see more zero in my bank balance. I add more zero, 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 100, 200, 500 crores bank balance I have, but I'm unable to have yes. 50 grams of rice because of diabetic problem, other health problem, but I want more money. So there is a need to have more deliberation discussion that how I can attain happiness in life, and that is very important at the end of the day, instead of getting involved in corruption, compromising with ethics values, and uh, misbehaving with others, leg pulling others, uh, unnecessarily we are inviting all those uh, disturbances in your life. Rather, live happily and let others live happily, accept others to become friendly, to become more tolerant, to have more uh, positive out notion. So I really enjoyed your deliberations. I really enjoyed the deliberation of previous speaker. You people made the difference in today's presentation. By today's presentation, I think set the proper tune for the whole program. Thank you for communicating very good message. God bless thank you. God thank you, professor. You. Thank you, professor. I suppose there is one question. Can you unmute? Can you unmute? Just one question, which is quite interesting. I think you should answer because uh, all of us would like to know this and uh, the answer to this question. Uh, what is the definition or interpretation of success according to Buddhist philosophy? Um, well, this is another very profound question. The success definition, well, all of us would like to hear the Oxford Dictionary definition, isn't it? But uh, for, for me, I think, I think the successful uh, um, definition for, uh, for successful in Buddhism would be knowing and being aware that nothing is permanent. 
being aware that nothing lasts forever, being aware that how beautiful or handsome a person may be, compounded phenomena. You are just an aggregated phenomena. And all aggregated phenomena will ultimately disintegrate. Something Professor Dave mentioned here, we are all the time worried about adding extra zeros to our bank account. But at the, same, at the end of the day, when you just seize your breath, not even hundreds of zeros would help you. Realizing this one would be a grand success as per, Buddhist, as per Buddhism. That would be what I call it a success. Thank you. Wonderful, so wonderful. I, I think this uh, answers all our questions. Yes, realizing what is the truth and what is the significance of truth in life is the success of, I think, which we can learn from Buddhism. Thank you, Dr. Nidhu. Very excellent presentation. Uh, Thank you very much. Bye.